Come into the midst of us, Jesus. Speak to our hearts. Yes. Help us understand that you're a good God. Oh, yeah. Everything we have, you gave it to us. Yes. Yes. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. So good to see Brother Philip here with us today. Good to see you. I remember. From these scripture verses, I want to talk on a thought today entitled, You Can't Outgive God. Amen. You can't outgive God. Look at your name and say, You can't outgive God. My brothers and my sisters, I wonder. Why today, why, why giving is so important to God? Have you ever thought about why God put giving in the Bible and how he put we all to give? Well, I thought about that in just my theory. I wonder, could it be what? We do with our wealth that God has given us demonstrate back to God how we love, trust, and honor Him. Christians who, who, who fully trust God as their financial resource will give generously to the Lord. The ones that understand what they have as they look back in their mind and understand that they weren't born with a silver spoon. Amen. In their hand or in their mouth, uh, they have no problem giving well to God. But church, there are, there are benefits to our giving to the work of the Lord. When we give generously, it has a heavenly effect. It unleashes our Heavenly Father's provision in our lives. Let me, let me share one thing we must understand that God, He cannot lie. Right. Whatever God says, it shall come to pass. Now we know the enemy, the enemy will shoot us curb in a heartbeat, but God, he can't lie. Amen. Luke 6 and 38, it says, Give, very simple, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet, whether it shall be measure to you again. My brothers and sisters, if we ever get a grip how to give right, God will in return give to us. And in his giving it will be an overflow. Can, can, can I go back a little bit? Can I tell you what happened to me? And I'm quite sure I'm not the only person who went through that stage about giving. Uh, uh -huh. Never forget when I was a little boy, uh, mama didn't make a whole lot of money, but she would give us money to put in the church. Yeah. And I might even share this with you before. And we had to walk to Zion Baptist. We didn't have the luxury of having an automobile. So we had to walk to church, walk to Sunday school, and Mama would entice us by giving us a dollar. Back then, a dollar meant something. <coughs> Some stores would go against the, the blue code, and they would open early. And temptation was all around us to stop by one of Johnny Cookies. Some y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. That's the code. It was strong, a strong temptation, but we kept the murder of what mama would do if she didn't see you put that dollar in the church. So we passed on by the store. I didn't understand now 
back then, but I understand now. <laughs> Let me give you a little bit more clarity. In, in our Bible days, what they did in this text was they would carry a long robe, and it was used, it was used. I wish I had some visual aid here. It was used to, amen, the grain of the overflow. They, they would put this long robe, and they would use it to carry the overflow grain. Amen. It was in compliance with God. It was in, in, in obedience. And God, as I indicated, he cannot lie. So they had an overflow. Mm -hmm. If we give Genesis, we, 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 we can expect God's blessings in our lives. And we can expect eternal rewards in heaven. So my brothers and sisters, we don't own Nothing. Amen. 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 The parable of, of, of the rich man is a powerful mind blowing illustration of how foolish we are to think that something belongs to us. Luke 12 and 16 through 21 it says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Looked like he would put give right there, but he thought within himself, Because I have no room where to restore my fruits. And here's what he did. He, he said, this will I do. Let God out. I will pull down my bonds and, and, and build greater. Look like he would have helped somebody. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. He says, I, 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 I will say to my soul, soul with a big S. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But, look at your neighbor and say, but. God said unto him, Amen. Think about all the things that what he had planned it to do, but God said unto him, look what God called it, thou fool. Hmm. This night, not tomorrow night, but this night, in, in, in your plan, in, in, in what you think you're going to do, the Bible says, uh, the Lord says, uh, this night thy soul shall be, be required of thee. In other words, you're going to die tonight. Then it goes on. Then, then who, whom shall those things be which thou had provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Church, we ought to give our first portion of all of our increase to God. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that, Pastor? I mean, well, he gave it to us. Well. Amen. The whole nation of Israel were cursed for their failure to Amen. tithe. Amen. Amen. Go back, go back and look at Malachi 3, verses 8 through 12. It says, the question is that, will a man rob God? Amen. I want you to notice the strategy in this verse that says, yet ye have robbed me. Mm. God is talking. He said, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? Listen, listen, listen to what God said. In tithes and in offerings. 
The Bible says ye, ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. God said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And he says, and prove me now. Where we've said the Lord of hosts. He says, if I will not open you, I want you to get this part, the windows with an S of heaven mm -hmm. and pour you out a blessing Amen. that there shall be not room enough to receive. Amen. Not only did God say that, God kept on talking and he said that I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes Amen. And, 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 and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. All right. Neither shall your vines cast her fruit before the time in the field. Amen. Said the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. I like this part. And all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land. Said the Lord of hosts. When we give, we ought to be happy. Amen. In our giving. And you might say, why should I be happy? Well, we ought to be happy because we are able to give. Somebody ought to be shouting out. Y'all know life ain't always been good. Amen. But since you tapped into what the Lord is saying, Jesus. things got a little bit better. Jesus. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. It says, not grudging or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Yes, yes. We ought to give cheerfully mm -hmm. and have joy filled in our heart. Yes, yes. And then the reason why I, I, I said this today because some folks get teed off when it comes time to give. Right. What is given for? Giving is for the support, the work, of the gospel. Yes. Not only locally, but to support the gospel all around the world. Amen. When we give God, he promised to provide for us. Yes. Yes. Amen. He promised that. Amen. Well, amen. We give, he will supply our needs. Yes. Amen. We give to Feed folks. Uh -huh. We give to help close people. Amen. But the main reason why we give is for the gospel. Amen. We give to honor our God. Yes. Uh, when we give, we give to help us. Yes. Amen. We show God. Amen. Kindness. When we give, we are displaying to the world as well as God that we have some kind folks that do care about God as well as somebody else. God has a great blessing that's coming to us who give obediently right before his presence. Do I have anybody in here ever gave your last to God? When you gave your tithes and offering, amen, you realize that your bank account went down just about to the bottom. But you gave because you're trusting in God. There are consequences 
for disobedience. It will cause us some financial struggles. But when we obey God, we can claim our financial provision. Why? Because if we stand right, if we stand on the word of God and do what thus said the Lord, it says bring your whole time. Talking about 10%. Maybe let me help somebody that might be struggling with math in the church. If you make a hundred dollars, ten of it belongs to God. That ain't your money. That ain't your party of pleasing money.
Jesus. Thank you. 
The pastor did not feed. <laughs> Deacons didn't feed. Amen. Entitlement think that because they get upset, they hurt the church.
and we are running the engine out of the church. So let's be careful what we say. You remember Israel? You remember Israel? Yeah. Amen. God said, look here, I got a little short journey. Yeah. I want you to stroll out. Amen. Take a little tour. And I'm getting ready to put you in the Yes. But them folks got the running down mouth. Yeah. And they talk. I appreciate what they said. Yeah. They talk too much. Yeah. And they never said, I want to appreciate yeah. Amen. Yeah. they got the running down mouth. Yeah. And they were here to the king. Yeah. Yeah. And the children of God got yeah. the running down mouth. Yeah. And God turned a short travel yeah. into 40 years. Yeah. If you want God to bless the church, yeah. stop running your mouth. Yeah. And trust the Lord. We have to do that all right. We have to stop running our mouth. Speak it down when the church is speaking. Let me tell you something. God showed me. Look, he said, look at your heart. He said, don't you know I got somebody out there, got so much money. Hey, Amen. They want to bless you. But you got to get your mind squared away first. You got to stop. You know, here we go, y'all. I was in. Hold on, I'm a preacher like money. You like money too. So I'm like, you got some food. You, got money. you don't want to get a video tip. What is a good preacher about here? This is what the devil don't want to know. That's what the devil don't want to know, baby. Yeah, there ain't no food. Ain't no manna coming down. Don't be talking about the manna coming down. Ain't no more manna coming down. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I can pray for you, amen. I'm trying to be quiet. I can pray. Come on, pray for me. You said that home. I'm waiting. We're going to pray for you. Pray I ain't going to help feed you when you home. <laughs> if you love me, take me to food now. Take me Yeah. Ain't no telling where I'm 
why we here right now. But I'm trying to teach my children. They know all of this is about. I'm trying to teach my grandchildren to trust in the Lord. I'm going to be here always. Amen. I'm preaching a long time. Amen. 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 But he's good. Ain't he good? Amen. Amen. You know, but let me tell you something. See, when you trust God and you keep, he'll keep sickness off of you. It will. That's the way I'm. Huh? Keep you looking fresh. Amen. Make you look good. Folks, yeah. how old are you? Like, how old are you? You say I'm 50. It's all you when you lie to me. No, I ain't lying. He'll keep you looking good. Do I have one there? Yeah. Yeah. No, I ain't gonna say that. Some of y'all just say that. I'm like, so sad. Oh, but God made you look good. <laughs> huh? Don't you think you look good when God made you look good? That's what God made you in his image. Because you look good. I'm trusting the Lord. That's enough right now. I'm ready to Let's go home. Doors of church is open. Lord, been good. You can't